Let's all um, begin our service by saying together our affirmation, which is on the screen behind me. I treat myself with love and respect each day. I am grateful. And I'm grateful for each one of you who are going to stand up right now and join me in singing Stand Together. So uh, the daily word today is uh, good. It, uh, I'll hold it. I'm good. Uh, I am one with the loving guidance of divine mind. Spirit expresses through all creation as loving guidance, maintaining perfect order in all things. Today I focus and take time to gain direction in all that I do. Since my essence is of spirit, I am one with divine mind always, and I remember the truth whenever I feel confused, conflicted, or uncertain of what my next step should be. My mortal mind is limited, relying on yesterday's fears to make today's decisions. I choose to move beyond any perceived limitations to the loving guidance available through the presence of divine mind within. This day unfolds before me, filled with satisfaction and joy, as I feel that loving guidance every step I take, every choice I make. I am one with the loving guidance of divine mind. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Psalm 119, 105. If you would all repeat with me. I am one with the loving guidance of divine mind. Now I'd like us to close our eyes, if that feels comfortable to you, and envision our sanctuary as a beautiful heart. And as you're doing so, bring to mind any person, place, or circumstance in the world today that you can think of who is in need of prayer. And see them in this heart as we now together sing the beautiful song written by David, our meditation song. meditation today and 
for our meditation today, we're going to do a loving kindness meditation. Some of you may recognize this. It's become popular in yoga practices. So if you take a moment and just relax yourself in your seat, allow your seat to become heavy. Allow your feet to sink into the ground. All right. I'm going to do our meditation today. And for our meditation today, we're going to do a loving kindness meditation. Some of you may recognize this. It's become popular in yoga practices. So if you take a moment and just relax yourself in your seat, allow your seat to become heavy. Allow your feet to sink into the ground. Feel your whole body relax. Feel your body become heavy, relaxed, at peace. When you're ready, take a deep breath in. And release. Take another deep breath in and release. Allow relaxation to set in as you feel the sense of peace growing within you. Let your mind settle and become clear. Thank your body and your mind for its presence today. And now, with yourself in mind, and with loving yourself in mind, listen to these words and let yourself bathe in self-care. As you hear them, let them sink in and send the love to every cell in your body. May I be filled with loving kindness. May I be held in loving kindness. May I feel connected and calm. May I accept myself just as I am. And may I be happy. Repeating those words in mind will say themselves to ourselves in friendship and kindness again. May I be filled with loving kindness. May I be held in loving kindness. May I feel connected and calm. May I accept myself just as I am. And may I be happy. And now open your circle of loving kindness and bring to mind someone who is dear to you, someone whom you care about, who always loves and supports you. Visualize this person and see them in your mind. Feel and reflect upon this person's goodness sensing what in particular you love about him or her. In your heart, feel your appreciation for your dear one and offer and bathe them in these words of kindness. May you be filled with loving kindness. May you be held in loving kindness. May you feel my love now. May you accept yourself just as you are, and may you be happy. Send that loved one all of your love and set them aside. Now bring to mind a neutral person in your life. This might be someone you see regularly, someone you might not know very well, a neighbor, a grocery store clerk, someone maybe you see at Unity. Bring this person into mind now as we send them 
love, and kindness. Visualize and bathe them in love. May you be filled with loving kindness. May you be held in loving kindness. May you feel my love now. May you accept yourself just as you are. May you be happy. Bathe that person in your love and set them aside and thank them for coming. And now, if it's possible, bring to mind someone with whom you've had a difficult relationship. Perhaps it's someone that you've had a difficult time liking, feeling sympathy or compassion for. Someone who may have hurt you, you may have dislikes or resentments about. But know this person is also part of you. Reminding yourself to see this person as a whole being, deserving of love and kindness. Bring them fully in your mind now. See them. Feel your whole body relax. Feel your body become heavy, relaxed, at peace. When you're ready, take a deep breath in and release. Take another deep breath in and release. Allow relaxation to set in as you feel the sense of peace growing within you. Let your mind settle and become clear. Thank your body and your mind for its presence today. And now, with yourself in mind and with loving yourself in mind, listen to these words and let yourself bathe in self-care. As you hear them, let them sink in and send the love to every cell in your body. May I be filled with loving kindness. May I be held in loving kindness. May I feel connected and calm. May I accept myself just as I am. And may I be happy. Repeating those words in mind will say themselves to ourselves in friendship and kindness again. May I be filled with loving kindness. May I be held in loving kindness. May I feel connected and calm. May I accept myself just as I am, and may I be happy. And now open your circle of loving kindness and bring to mind someone who is dear to you, someone whom you care about, who always loves and supports you. Visualize this person and see them in your mind. Feel and reflect upon this person's goodness, sensing what in particular you love about him or her. In your heart, feel your appreciation for your dear one and offer and bathe them in these words of kindness. May you be filled with loving kindness. May you be held in loving kindness. May you feel my love now. May you accept yourself just as you are, and may you be happy. Send that loved one all of your love and set them aside. Now bring to mind a neutral person in your life. This might be someone you see regularly, 
someone you might not know very well, a neighbor, a grocery store clerk, someone maybe you see at Unity. Bring this person into mind now as we send them love and kindness. Visualize and bathe them in love. May you be filled with loving kindness. May you be held in loving kindness. May you feel my love now. May you accept yourself just as you are. May you be happy. Bathe that person in your love and set them aside and thank them for coming. And now, if it's possible, bring to mind someone with whom you've had a difficult relationship. Perhaps it's someone that you've had a difficult time liking, feeling sympathy or compassion for. Someone who may have hurt you, you may have dislikes or resentments about. But know this person is also part of you. Reminding yourself to see this person as a whole being, deserving of love and kindness. Bring them fully in your mind now. See them as someone who feels pain, as someone who may have anxiety and who also feels suffering. Sending and seeing if possible to send your words of love to them as well. Bathe them in your words of kindness. May you be filled with loving kindness. May you be held in loving kindness. May you feel my love now. May you accept yourself just as you are. And may you be happy. Bathe that person in your love so that they too can feel love. Let it lighten them and so too lighten you. See all your three people that you blessed and see yourself now bathed in this love and light. Thank each one of them for coming. And now thank yourself as we see ourselves filled with love and light, let us remember where we are. Begin to feel your body on this chair. Feel your feet on the ground and remember yourself here at Unity. We'll take one more moment of silence and rest in the silence. Coming back into our body, we feel ourselves here, and we begin to remember we're in this room. Begin to move your fingers and toes, stretch your arms, and come back to this room and open your eyes whenever you're ready. Thank you. All right. So most of you know me, I'm Kayla Harvey, but for those of you who don't recognize me, I'm usually in the youth room back in Sunday school with the kids. But I feel very blessed to be here today and have been asked to speak. I have an important reminder today that I feel is important now more than ever. This is a time of great turmoil and unrest in our world, but I also believe it's a great opportunity, a time for growth, expansion, and evolution. When I was thinking about this month's topic, about loving ourselves and others more, something occurred to me. It dawned on me that the root to both is the same. I have a colleague who's sort of famous for this saying. She says, you can't take anyone where you've never been. Meaning that you must first and foremost learn to love and heal yourself before you can truly teach and help others to love and heal. So my message today is about just that finding a way to check in with ourselves and re-spark that light so that we can continue to spread the light and enlighten others. 
I want to preface this talk with an often undiscussed and incredibly important truth. We are all far more powerful than we can possibly imagine. Like ripples in a pond, we affect everything and everyone around us. Though our base senses tell us different, we are all connected. Everything connected around us. We are connected to everyone and everything. Quantum physics now tells us that everything on a molecular level has motion and vibrational frequency. And it's through this vibrational frequency and energy we all emit and take in that we are in constant communication with every object and living thing in our world. When we're in a state of harmony and vibrating at our highest possible frequency, we're in a state of health and wellness, and we attract to us that which is in alignment with that frequency. We literally lighten every room we walk in and become beacons of light. But what happens when we're feeling off? What happens to that same energy and vibration when it's lowered, when we're feeling drained, when that light inside of us has been dimmed for a while? How does that affect our attunement, our manifestation, our ability to heal ourselves, to affect others? Because we're amplifiers of energy, we are connected to all things, that ripple effect touches and colors everything around us, everything we do, every interaction we have, and everything we perceive. This concept can be incredibly empowering but it can also be a little frightening in some ways. Because for many of us sitting here in this room, we consider ourselves helpers, light workers, or simply lovers of humanity who want to see the world and all its inhabitants living and loving in harmony. And we do our best to assist. Well, in order to do that, I'm here to tell you, you must first make yourself a priority and take care of yourself. We must make sure our light is burning so that we may spark others. We've all been on airplanes, correct? We got ourselves here, most of us, via airplane. And we've heard that common saying that goes over the loudspeaker that tells us that if in the unlikely event that the cabin loses pressure and the air masks drop, what are we asked to do? Anyone? Put it on ourselves first, absolutely. And the ironic thing about this is, in writing this, I said it backwards, I think about five or six times <laughs> to put it on someone else first. And that is sometimes our instinct, especially as unity people, we want to help others. However, if we're incapacitated on the floor, there's no way we're helping others. So we need to remember that that mask situation is a really a metaphor for life. Before we can become that beacon, we must spark ourselves. All of us have times in which we're feeling really good and our light feels we're burning really bright. We might even say we're feeling on fire. And it's amazing. And we can see the manifestations and all of the things that come after. It feels like there are beautiful waves and we're in alignment. But sometimes that doesn't last. And that's normal and that's okay. We're human. But how do we get that back? How do we get our fire back? How do we get back in that groove and feel that? So when we do feel that way, we need to engage ourselves, check our lights. How do we keep that positive energy, that vibratory resonance really high? The answer is we must always be checking in with ourselves. We need to know what we need to do to recharge ourselves. Just after I finished looking over these notes and I was doing some of the final touches up on this talk, I took a quick break on social media. We do that. We check in with Facebook, we look at Twitter, we look at Instagram, just, you know, to see what's going on. Space out for a little bit. And uh, one of my friends 
someone who's here today, posted the most relevant statement to reinforce and summarize everything I wanted to say today. It said, make yourself a priority once in a while. It's not selfish, it's necessary. That's exactly it. We, when we do our best to live our truths, to learn to love and respect and take care of ourselves first, that is actually the most beautiful, kind, and loving gift we can possibly give to others. If you tell someone else how to live, you describe the way. But if you live the example for others, you light the way. The specifics of how we do that vary from person to person and situation to situation. But we can start by checking in and taking an assessment of ourselves. We can do so by asking a few simple questions. I'm going to ask a few questions out loud and I want you to think specifically for yourself. As I do, just take a quick check-in with yourself where you might sit. So you could do this daily. Ask yourself, how loving are my thoughts to myself today? How strong are my boundaries? Do I say no when I need to? Do I take care of myself? Am I kind to myself? Do I have fun with myself? Do I give myself the time and attention that I need? Asking yourself those simple questions and checking in with yourself every day can help guide you to where you're missing yourself. I'm going to give a personal story because those are always so good. And we learn best from our own situations, don't we? So I'm a person who loves to help. I live for it. However, what I notice is when I take on too much and become overwhelmed, it affects every aspect of my life, as I'm sure many of you. I don't get enough sleep. I don't eat very well. I become negative and irritable. My work suffers, and the saddest part is that I miss the opportunities to really help heal others. The whole thing that I was trying to do in the first place. In fact, some of you may remember that at a recent Ohana meeting, I had shared that I was going to be doing this awesome workshop after service. Some of you may also know, if you know me a little personally, that um, I'm also building a therapeutic practice, working several jobs, and I tend to stretch myself a little thin now and then. I'm a person who truly believes in myself and I think that I can do all things. In theory, I want to say yes to everything and I truly feel genuine excitement in every venture I do. I want to give of myself, live a life of service for others. However, I forget sometimes that I'm still human and I still have very distinct physical, emotional, and spiritual needs as well. So when I stop having time for myself, it's like I stop tuning my own instrument or stop maintaining my own car. Things start to break down and it affects everything. And my whole aim and my purpose, that which I'm trying to do, suddenly dwindles. So as the date of the workshop approached and my material became more and more dense and I'm involving myself in all these grand ideas and not getting very far, it became more of a daunting process. Time escaped and stress started to build and it became no fun anymore. It started to become work. I got plenty of that. This thing that I was so excited for quickly became a little fear-based and I felt that welling inside me. I wanted to do the topic justice and I wanted to make time for it, but because I didn't have any more and we still currently live in this interesting timeline, I became, I realized I was sacrificing time from take care of Kayla time. And until a few weeks ago, I still wanted to make this happen. I really, really did. And by gosh, I still will. 
there's some good stuff we're going to be talking about, but it just wasn't going to be today. So I still had this grand idea, and then, and then I had a really tough week, as we do sometimes. I was feeling really overwhelmed and sort of just getting by, and I had the most magical twist of fate. I began doing a women's trauma support group. Again, trying to reach out and help others heal. And as I was doing this amazing group, we started talking about the stressors and the struggles that we're experiencing daily life. And I had briefly participated and shared my feelings of current overwhelm. And at the end of the group, as a way to check out, we pulled self-care cards. And we each discussed what we had pulled and how it might relate to ourselves and what we can do. And as I want to involve everyone, I participate to show my participation in faith and give courage for those in the group. I realized this was no small act. I was not just doing this for them. This was for me. I pulled the card that was meant exactly for me on that day. It was entitled boundaries. It said, if it's not an instant yes, it's a no. <laughs> the communication was very clear. <laughs> and everyone in the group laughed, just like this. I needed to start being able to forgive myself for not being superwoman and start saying no when I became overwhelmed and when it was too much. The message I was receiving from spirit at that moment was literally palpable. We st I started a support group and we were doing this for others to learn self-care and what was needed. And what was needed in that moment was I needed to hear that I needed to start supporting myself. And sometimes for me, that meant saying no. And saying no would teach others to do the same that I'm not doing this just for myself, that in doing that kind act for me, I'm doing it for others. This is what I needed to learn, to keep my vibration high. So I wanna thank you for allowing me to take a pause on that today. Come back when I'm ready, when I'm really feeling fired up. And that's what I'm gonna ask all of you today to do, is take a look at yourself, decide, do I need a recharge? What recharges me? And what commitment do I make to myself? There's a need for this now, I feel, in the upcoming days and months, possibly more than we've needed it before. There's a lot of negativity and polarization being highlighted, and in some cases probably exacerbated by the media and public forums. And much is happening politically and socially. And it's my belief that however you sit, whatever you feel about it, many old wounds are being brought back to the surface for healing on a national and global scale. At this time of chaos in our world, we need each other more than ever. And that means we need to be bright, strong beacons of light more than ever. So we need to figure out what the heck it is that recharges our battery so that when it comes time for us to enlighten and spark those others, we're ready. So Patrick's going to start by passing around um, a stack of worksheets for everybody, just a simple little thing that'll help us remind ourselves. So we have a bucket of pens going around. There may be some for those of you who sit with the pockets in front of you, but there is a basket coming around. And as this is being passed out, I want you to think about yourself and think, what recharges me? When I'm feeling down, what re-sparks me? What is it that gives me back that fire, that excitement, that feel-good feeling? For me, that's many things. A good night's sleep really helps. Saying no when I need to helps me. Being with friends, being able to laugh, and doing something creative really helps re-spark me. But everyone is different. Anybody have any thoughts that they want to share about something that really recharges them when they're feeling drained? My garden. Garden, yes! Nature is a great place to get recharged. Any place in nature, and gardens are beautiful. Taking a bath. Taking a bath. 
That's a great self-care, physically and emotionally. Oh yes, animals are wonderful sources of love and light. Hanging out with them and feeling their unconditional love can be a great source. Anyone else? Music. music. Yes, talking to friends, having the music that we like, feeling that connection to someone, something. And the ocean, many of us have come here, come to love here, lived here, love the ocean. So that might, right? Right now, when you have this moment, write a few things down. Just a few of those things that might re-spark you, that recharge you. Just remind yourself of that. And once we have a few things down, I want you to find a way to make one commitment to yourself. That looks different based on every person. For myself, I've decided I'm going to try. And sometimes it's an effort. And we try week from week, but I'm going to try to say no to at least one thing every week. <laughs> I'll let you know how it goes. It, you know, sometimes it's a work in progress, but that's what I'm going to do for myself. But for you, it might mean going down to the ocean every three days. It might mean making a commitment to get eight hours of sleep. Or it might mean calling your friend on the phone Whatever that is, try to make at least a weekly commitment to yourself. Something you can do just for you to recharge that light. And know that this is not just for yourself, that this is truly for everyone around you. What I'm going to do is leave you with one last quote. And it's a pretty brilliant quote that's come up for me about six times in the last three weeks. It's incredible. Um, which tells me this is exactly what we need to hear today. It's by Marianne Williamson, and she wrote A Return to Love, Reflections on the Principle of A Course in Miracles. And she wrote, Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant? gorgeous, talented, and fabulous. Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people will not feel insecure around you. We were all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give permission to others to do the same. As we liberate ourselves from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. So what I'm asking you to do today is find a way to recharge yourself so that when you walk into that room, your light recharges everyone around you. Thank you.